everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a full review and first impressions and like check in throughout the day on this right here which is the Kat Von D Locket Foundation. I got this uh, about a month ago and I haven't used it yet because I've been using other foundations. And since then I've been doing a little bit of research on it just to see what other people think of it and so many people love this foundation. So I got mine in the color Light 46. This is supposed to be a full coverage matte foundation for oily skinned girls. It's supposed to last 24 hours. It's transfer resistant. It's fragrance free. It's oil free. It's for all skin types. Uh, it sounds like a dream for me because I have super oily skin and right now it is 111 degrees outside. I am not kidding you guys. So this is going to be a lifesaver for me. I am getting a late start. It is 3.30 already right now. So the day is young though. I have so much to do. So for those who don't know, Kat Von D makeup is exclusive to Sephora. You can also get it on KatVonDBeauty.com which I will link down below for you. This is $35 which isn't that bad and it's one fluid ounce for like a high-end foundation I feel like that's really not that bad um, Kat Von D also is making a new package for this she's repackaging the foundation but the formula is going to stay the same so that's really good and it comes in 19 different shades cool undertones uh, warm undertones and neutral undertones which is fantastic all right here's what it looks like so this packaging is actually really cool but I can see why she's repackaging it because it's a little bulky and a little different um, it has this little stopper on it so you can see there's like a plastic outside and then the bottle itself is inside it's really sturdy though so that's really good I already primed my face and anytime I do a first impressions on a foundation I try to keep my skincare and everything else on my face the exact same that way I can really tell if it's the foundation that I like or don't like you know because if I'm mixing it with other new things I can never really tell what it is I don't like or like so um, I used the Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer Smoothing Primer all over my face and then I also primed my eyelids with the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base just to kind of get that out of the way Okay, I'm going to apply that with a dampened beauty blender, so I guess, do I shake it? Maybe I should shake it. Does it say to shake it? It doesn't say to shake it. I'm going to shake it anyways. Okay, then I'm going to pump on my hands. Comes out really nice. It looks really thick when I pump it. I'm going to do three pumps. Um, so you can see right there, it's really thick. It's not running at all. Uh, so that could be a good thing or a bad thing. I also didn't color match myself to this. I just kind of guessed online and hopefully it works. So I'm going to dot it on my face. Oh man, I could already tell that this is going to be super full coverage, which I tend to really like. So I know lots of you guys do too. I'm afraid it might be kind of heavy though because it is so full coverage, you know, but we will test that out. So I'm just going to blend it in. I'm going to drag it down my neck a little bit because um, I don't know so much. The color actually doesn't look bad. Looks like it matches pretty well. This color, um, I don't know if I told you guys it yet, Light 46, it does have pink undertones. And it's described as having pink undertones um, on the cat, or I was gonna say Cat Bondi website. It might, I haven't checked the Cat Bondi website, but on the Sephora website, it does say um, for like fair to light girls with pink undertones, or not girls, <sighs> fair to light skin tones with pink undertones. Boys or girls can wear this. Don't get me wrong, makeup has no gender, that's for sure. So there's one layer and I still have a ton left on my hand. I still have probably two pumps, maybe a pump and a half left on my hand. I'm going to go in and just put a little bit more on my nose because I feel like for some reason my nose has been like really red lately. Maybe it's allergies. My eyes have been really red lately too so it must be allergies. But it looks really good. It applied really well. 
Um, I don't feel like I had to do any kind of extra blending or anything like that. It is definitely full coverage. Holy moly, it's full coverage. Um, I tried to get some on my eyes as much as possible, but I'm going to use a concealer just because I like a lot, a lot of coverage down there. But I'm looking in the mirror right here, and it looks really well. It seems to, like, have filled in my pores a little bit. I mean, I did use a pore filling primer, but it seems to have filled in my pores a little bit more than when I don't use um, this, or when I haven't used this foundation, if that makes any sense. It looks really smooth. Um, I don't really have any redness poking through, and so far I really like it. I also like that it doesn't have that weird cream to powder finish that some foundations have, like the Hourglass Immaculate Liquid to Powder. I don't like liquid to powder foundations because they dry really quickly, you can't layer them up, you can't put products on top of them, and they look cakey. This doesn't seem to look cakey at all. So I'm impressed. I'm going to wipe the rest of this off. I definitely used way too much. Note to self, you only need probably a pump, maybe a pump and a half. Uh, but yeah, I used way too much. For under eye concealer, I've been loving the Chanel Corrector Perfection in the color 31. I know Chanel's really expensive. I bought this for myself on my birthday like two or three years ago. It's probably disgusting and expired, but it doesn't smell weird. And I actually really, really like it. So I put that on and then I add a little bit of highlight and mix it together. So this is the MAC Prep and Prime in Radiant Rose. So I just kind of mix it together because the Chanel one's a little bit on the peachy side. So I do that. And then usually I put a little bit of concealer around my nose. Um, you know what? I'm still going to do it. It doesn't look like I need it but I'm still gonna do it. Um, the Kat Von D foundation is actually like super duper, super duper full coverage, so I don't think I need to do that, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And then blend it in with the Beauty Blender. Okay, that looks obnoxiously bright on the camera. Why do I look so bright? Is it this ring light? Should I turn it down a little bit? Okay, well there's without the ring light so you can see what the color looks like. Um, it actually looks really good. It looks really, really good. So I'm gonna turn this back up just a little bit. I need to play with the settings on my camera, but it looks really good in person. It looks like it matches my skin tone like super, super well. So hopefully it does not oxidize. Now I'm gonna set everything. So to set my under eyes, I love the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I swear to you, I can't go without this. I can't set my under eyes without this. It's just like, it's magic. So um, a couple of people asked what brush I use. This is the Sephora Pro Contour number 79 brush. I will link it down below, but you only need like the teeniest, tiniest bit of this um, setting powder. Like the teeniest, tiniest bit. To set my face, I'm going to use the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in the color Medium Plus. I use this almost every day. I've hit pan on it. The pan for these is really weird. It's like a honeycomb looking thing. And then the brush is the Sephora Pro All Over Brush number 61. So this, again, is something I've used several times before, so I know it's not going to, like, compromise the integrity of the product. Um, I set everything just because my skin is so stinking oily that I feel like I have to. So there we go. Okay. So it is now 345. I'm going to do the rest of my makeup. I have some videos I have to film. I have some errands I have to run, I have to clean the house, I have to mop the floor, I have lots of videos to edit, so it's going to be a long day for me. I don't think I'm going to go to bed until midnight plus, so I will definitely be wearing this for a full eight hours, but I'm going to do all of that and then I'll check in with you guys throughout the day to like show you how it's wearing. First check-in of the day, it is 5.09, so it's been about an hour and a half ish since I put it on. I just got done filming a full review on the Becca Cosmetics Jaclyn Hill Champagne Toast eyeshadow palette, which if you haven't heard the controversy and you haven't seen my review, I will link it down below for you. Um, but needless to say, I've been behind these hot lights. These lighting, this lighting when you film, like it's hot. It's hot, hot. Also, I did my hair. I blue dry my hair. I was under the hair dryer for about 20 minutes. So I was kind of sweating, I'm kind of sweating, um, but the makeup still looks so good. Um, this is highlighter, by the way. This is the Artist Couture um, 
Coco Bling highlighter, which is like pow. So never mind that. That's highlighter. But everything else looks so good. I haven't had to touch up. I haven't had to blot. I haven't had to go in with my beauty blender and like fix because sometimes my foundation when I'm talking a lot, like when I'm filming, will settle into like my smile lines or like my eyebrow expression lines. And I haven't had to do that. And I'm looking and I might be able to do it a little bit right here right now. But other than that, like you can't really tell. It still looks really, really good. It's settling very, very nicely. Um, it hasn't oxidized or changed colors. I think it looks really good. Let me zoom in so you can see all of my facial glory up front and close. So here's what it looks like up close, and I think it looks pretty dang good. There's what my forehead looks like. Um, it's still totally matte. It doesn't look cakey. Um, it's slightly settling into expression lines. I mean, I guess I could go in and like fix that a little bit, but that's also because I've been filming and like being very expressive, if that makes sense. But overall, it looks really good. So I'm going to go about my day, do a few more things. I have to film my Fame Expo haul, which is going to be like an hour long video. So I have another hour in front of these lights. We're going to see how this foundation holds up. Okay, guys, so it is currently... 9.50. I'm waiting for something to go on sale. It goes on sale in 10 minutes. It's the Graveyard Girl slash Tarte Calibration Palette. Anyway, so I have 10 minutes, but it won't take that long to give an update. So it's now been, what, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's been about six and a half hours. This is about the time of the day with normal foundation that I start to feel a little bit oily. My skin starts to get a little bit itchy. I will bust out the blotting papers or some kind of powder and I'm looking at myself in the mirror right now and it is a little bit shiny. I can see some shine starting to come through on my nose, um, particularly like the tip of my nose and my forehead a little bit. My chin really isn't too bad. As far as like settling, in, settling into fine lines, I don't feel like this settled into my smile lines like at all. Usually foundation right here will start to kind of sink into my smile lines like fairly quickly and I don't see that at all. This lipstick is holding on pretty good too. This is the uh, Dose of Colors Stone. I mean it's, wear it's wearing off in the middle but that's not what this video is about. Anyways, I think it looks really good. I mean I probably, you know, it could fare some powder um, but also when I put my setting powder on in the morning, the, the MAC one, um, I didn't put a whole lot on. I just kind of like dotted it when usually I really layer it on. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see all up in my space, all up in my face. So again, remember this is highlighter and I know sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between highlighter and actual oil, but that is highlighter. So you can see my nose. I did not put highlighter on my nose and it's a little bit shiny and so is my forehead. My chin looks okay, but it doesn't look bad. It looks just kind of like a natural glow, I guess. Um, I have been rubbing my nose a lot, so that might have something to do with it. My allergies are acting up, and I've been rubbing my nose and like using tissues a lot down here, so that's probably why that part wore off a little bit. But um, other than that, I think it still is looking really, really good. So I'm gonna wear it for a few more hours, maybe three more hours, at least. I still have lots of editing to do. Um, and then I'll check in one last time before I go to bed. Okay, I'm back and it is now 1.25 a.m. I never stay awake this late. I'm so proud of myself, slash I'm really, really, really stinking tired. So the foundation looks pretty much exactly the same as it did when I checked in at 10 o'clock. Um, it still has like the same finish, a bit of glowiness. My oil is definitely coming through. So the Locket foundation is not enough to keep me matte, but I'm like extremely oily. I don't know what the heck is wrong with my skin. It also could be the moisturizer that I used, although I've used it forever and ever. I think, you know, trying to mix it up a little bit, but overall the foundation is really good. Um, it didn't settle into any fine lines. Here, I'll zoom in for you. So my problem areas are right here. This is where foundation and makeup tend to settle in. My chin line right there, my nose, so right around my nose, and then occasionally just like right above my eyebrows, that is where makeup tends to settle. 
and I don't see any of that settling happening, which is fantastic because that's what I'm most self-conscious about. Oil, I can handle. You know, I can just get some blotting powder or a blotting paper and kind of get rid of that, but the settling into fine lines is really hard to get rid of, so I'm actually very, very impressed with that. Um, there is a bit of shine. I mean, my nose is to the point where I need to blot or put a little bit of powder on there, but it looks really good, and I have to say it's $35, which is a little bit cheaper than your typical high-end foundation, if you even want to call it that, so it's on the affordable side. It's not as expensive as Giorgio Armani or even Laura Mercier, so I like it. You know what? I'm going to turn this light down a little bit so you can... Oh, that's the lowest it goes. So I was going to say so you can see what it looks like um, in different lighting, but um, I think it looks really good. I give it a big thumbs up. I'm going to try it a couple more times with different primers, different powders, different uh, moisturizers just to see kind of what it does, but overall it worked for me, so oily skinned girls, two thumbs up. Uh, dry skinned girls, I don't know, because I don't have dry skin. So that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. I'm going to go to bed now, because I'm really tired. <laughs> Bye.